human. Welcome back to Occult of Misfits. I'm Matt Owens, of course. Um, if you didn't know, you can find Occult of Misfits on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and even on your Amazon Alexa or smart device. So if you love the sound of my sweet, sweet voice, you can check me out on any of those platforms. I'm most actively on Twitter or X uh, these days, so posting new stuff over there. I'm occasionally popping over on Instagram. I'm everywhere, guys. So check me out if you're interested in following my thoughts on the nature of reality, <laughs> being a spiritual misfit. It's kind of what I want to talk today, actually, is um, I was going on a walk yesterday and just sort of reminiscing about how I grew up in a Christian household and I knew what my set of beliefs were. Everything in the Bible is what I believe. Everything outside the Bible is heretical and they're going to hell. <laughs> that was basically um, <laughs> how I was raised and what I believed for a long time. Um, but as many of you, I'm sure, can relate to, I started questioning things, <laughs> right? And and my pastors never had sufficient answers for me. Um, and those uh, theologians and those wiser than myself didn't have sufficient answers for me. So I started uh, poking my nose around in you know Eastern philosophies and other religions worldwide, and started asking myself why I believe certain things, right? And so now I've gotten to this place, I've had sort of this huge, you know, what I call spiritual awakening in, in 2020. And uh, ever since then, it's just been this process of stripping away, uh, you know, a dark night of the soul situation, stripping away of all of my old beliefs and uh, old thoughts and, and everything and analyzing all of it. Why do I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior? Why do I believe in a monotheistic God? Why do I believe in reincarnation or, or whatever? And so it's just about stripping all of that away and getting down to the core of my beliefs, not my community's beliefs, not my parents' beliefs, but like, what do I actually truly believe? Like, let's think about this. And so I really started diving into these questions and philosophies and religions. And I feel like the more I got answers and the more I started putting pieces together, the less I, <laughs> I felt like I knew I would be like, okay, okay, this all makes so much sense. You know, the ancient Egyptians and, and their philosophies about life and the afterlife and the ancient Greeks and just all the ancient wisdom and stuff. I was like, yes, this totally makes sense. And then as I start thinking about it, it just starts blowing my mind and short-circuiting my poor human brain with smoke pouring out of my ears. And I'm like... I still kind of don't know what the hell's going on around here. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know if there's really a God. What is God? What does that mean? Is it a, a white bearded individual on, on a cloud? Is it an interdimensional being? Is it multiple beings? Is there a pantheon? Like, what the hell's going on around here? So I've always questioned everything, and I was kind of... <sighs> jealous is the wrong word, but I'm just kind of a little jealous of people who, you know are firm in their beliefs. They believe in the Bible and that's that. And Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And you can believe what you want to believe, but you're wrong. Um, <laughs> and I, I just, I don't know. If you ask me what happens in the afterlife, I'd be like, well, maybe this happens. Maybe that happens. But at the end of the day, like, I don't know. So I understand that makes me agnostic, but I just, I hate labels and I don't like to, you know, put myself in, in into any particular box or category, of course, like I'm free. Let me be free. Let me be free. <laughs> don't you dare put me in a box. I'm not putting myself in a box either. So it's hard. So I struggle like, man, it would be nice to just say, I'm this and these are my beliefs. And everybody be like, oh yeah, okay, okay. I, I know what Buddhists kind of believe. Like, okay, you're Buddhist, got it. Oh, you're Christian, got it. I know. But when you say like, well... I think we could be, you know, interdimensional energy beings from the one d divine source living in a 3D realm. It's like you lose a lot of people and you start talking like that, you know, like that's why I created a cult of misfits, because it's the misfits that are that I feel like are in the same boat. I feel I feel like a misfit. I feel like I don't fit in with the Christians necessarily. I don't fit in with the religious folk. Um, but at the same time, uh, especially nowadays, I feel like I don't fit in with the spiritual community as well. Like I 
when I was sort of starting this journey and asking all these questions and opening my heart, opening my mind, opening up to possibilities and different uh, uh, um, perspectives and, and opinions and beliefs, um, I was just sort of open to a lot. And now I've sort of gathered myself back up. I've, I'm done not done, but just uh, exploring what these what these things are and questioning them. And uh, I've sort of let go of a lot of the spiritual people I followed on Instagram or YouTube or whatever. I just feel like um, I don't necessarily relate to them like I once did. And so that's, again, what makes me feel like a misfit is I don't even fit in with the spiritual community, the spiritual weirdos, right? Like I thought that that was going to be my home base. Um, but I just feel disconnected from it in many ways, not completely. Right. But like, I, I don't know how to describe myself like, Oh, I'm spiritual, I guess, like whatever the fuck that means. Right. Or I don't know. Um, and so I just sort of, um, am jealous of, of the people who just know what they believe. I believe in the afterlife. I believe in whatever. So, um, perhaps, uh, one day it will solidify more in a satisfying way for me, but, uh, until then, I'm just sort of still questioning things and, um, you know, just the nature of this reality, the nature of God, the nature of what does divinity mean? You know, I've been looking a lot into these uh, ancient cultures and uh, our origin story for these very reasons. I'm like, let's get to the root of where these religions started. Like, that's something I've never done before. And most people who are, I feel like most people uh, just don't question things, right? In general, just most humans don't question things. They don't question the government or question their parents or question society or question their own thoughts and beliefs, right? Which is fine. There's nothing right or wrong with it. It's just an observation. And I used to be, I feel like I used to be that person where I just, I never questioned anything. It's part of the programming. Humans are very easily programmed, right? No blame. But um, I was very programmed to just not question anything. But it's it's in my DNA. It's in my personality to just be like, yeah, but that doesn't really make sense. So what are your thoughts on this? <clears throat> So I started looking into these ancient civilizations and what they believed. And I was never anybody who, you know, I've always kind of been into sci-fi and aliens and like, I'm on board with all of it. And like, did the aliens create the pyramids? Huh, question mark. Nobody knows. But I never really dug deeper than that. <laughs> you know, like, um, I never really questioned our origin story, where we came from, um, what the ancient texts and ancient stories and myths all sort of... Um, spoke about on these topics of our origins. Um, and so I started looking into it because I started realizing that there's a, there's a narrative. Um, I just feel like there's a narrative on the planet now, and that's kind of a very broad thing to say, I understand, but um, there's a certain narrative on the planet. And if you go against the narrative, that's not okay. It's frowned upon. Um, and so I, you know, going against the narrative of, of Christianity, for example, or going against the narrative of what happened in the garden of Eden and who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Right. <clears throat> I've done a lot of research into, uh, Yahweh and ancient, you know, the Jewish texts. This is all the stuff that interests me is like, who's this Yahweh character? For those of you that don't know, Yahweh is the, is the Hebrew word for God, essentially, uh, the Jewish, the ancient Jewish people called their God Yahweh. It's in the, the Pentateuch, the, the Torah, the Jewish, uh, holy book. And, I, I find it very interesting that in the in the New Testament and the Old Testament, there are two very different versions of gods that we're talking about, right? Like, if you read the Old Testament and the Bible, which um, the, the first five books of the Old Testament are the Jewish Torah, that the Pentateuch, that's, that's their holy book, is the first five of the Old Testament, just if you didn't know. Um, but the God of the Old Testament is real, he's... <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to be too offensive. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say he's a real, uh, not a nice, not a nice character in many ways. Uh, there's a lot of death and destruction and wrath and, um, jealousy from that, from Yahweh, real jealous character. This Yahweh doesn't want anybody else worship, doesn't want his, his people worshiping anybody but him, or he's going to get real riled up about it. <clears throat> he's got a long list of rules. And if you break any of those rules, you're totally screwed. Um, and then in the New Testament, it sort of shifts dramatically, and you got Jesus talking about this beautiful, loving, forgiving, peaceful, graceful God. So it's like, well, what's the deal with the guy in the Old Testament? Well, <laughs> we seem to be talking about two different gods here. 
um, when you look at it broadly like that. There's a, there's the nice God in the New Testament that's loving and peaceful and non-judgmental, uh, that doesn't care if you worship another God, right? And then there's the other one that's got some, that's got a bit of an attitude problem, right? That has a bit of an ego. And so I started thinking about egos and the flesh and and how mankind is also, you know, angry and greedy and um, mischievous. Well, that that was a weird word to say, but (laughs) you get what I'm saying. (laughs) Mischievous. Um, But oftentimes when you look at the Greek gods or the Egyptian gods or Mesopotamian gods, any of the pantheon of gods, they all sort of in in one way or another reflect humanity, right? Like they're real jealous or they get real pissed off or they bicker with their siblings or all this stuff, right? Um, And so whether or not you believe it's myth or literal, there were literal gods living amongst us in some way, um, they do not seem to me like divine beings. They seem like flesh and blood beings like us that maybe have powers that we don't have. Um, but they're kind of acting a lot like humans. So that's a real head scratcher to me. Like why, why are these gods behaving so badly? Why is Yahweh, uh, uh, you know, the, the Hebrew God, why is Yahweh behaving? Not great, not great. Right. Murdering people, just like having, uh, he, he always had humans on the planet who would like do his bidding for him. And, uh, you know, he would tell this guy to go and kill all these, you know, to destroy this city and murder and demolish this place. And r- real rough, real rough, not, not the loving and compassionate God you see in the New Testament. So um, when I started diving into these old ancient um, texts uh, telling about stories of old or origin stories. Like I I talk about ancient Mesopotamia and, you know, before I started diving into this, I had no idea. I had heard of Mesopotamia, but I don't know what the hell it is. Mesopotamia is the general area around Iraq and Iran between the Euphrates and the, um, (laughs) it just slipped my mind, the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers, right? Um, and, and allegedly, according to mainstream science, this is where civilization first started. Now, it's not to say there weren't people living all over the planet, uh, hunter-gatherers and cavemen and stuff like that, right, all over the world. But, but civilization, meaning knowledge of mathematics, of agriculture, of uh, engineering and construction, of you know how to build a society, having laws and uh, cleanliness and uh, et cetera, right? And so I start looking at these um, Mesopotamian texts. This is the earliest known writings that we've found so far. And there's a lot of talk in these texts of these gods, these divine beings that they call them, that came down from the heavens. Okay. And they basically took over. <laughs> the hum- they came down to this world. <clears throat> Depending on which origin story, all I, I'm going to say almost all of the origin stories all say something very similar to what I'm talking about. That's why I'm just using the Mesopotamian one as an example, because like they all kind of have very similar stories, which is also, again, very, very interesting, right? Why, why are they all talking about the same thing? So these Anunnaki allegedly came down to Earth and mated with the humans, right? And, and had children with the humans, these hybrids that were allegedly giants. They were called the Nephilim. Um, depending on the accounts, you know, they're either fallen angels or demons or monstrosities or whatever. They're not good by any account. Nobody likes the, uh, these hybrid human Anunnaki hybrids, right? Now, the thing about these stories about aliens coming down, potential aliens or interdimensional beings or gods or whatever you want to call them, because who knows, right? These are all, it's all open to interpretation. There are a lot of people who say it like it's a fact, like, no, this is what the, what the, it translates to, but nobody really knows. There are definitely some key words that could be translated differently, right? Depending on, on how you decide on translating it, which makes sense based, you know, on any language, some words take on different meaning, right? And it's like, well, it, it actually could mean that too. Um, and so these beings came down and they basically created the human. It's, it's usually from the earth or from the clay or something along those lines. And so it says that these beings created us, or according to the Bible, a being created us. But it's the same story, right? Like creating, creating man from the earth. 
So I find that interesting. And then in, all, in many of the, of the ancient texts, uh, specifically the Mesopotamian one, of course, uh, they talk about how uh, at some point along the lines, the humans start getting a little too smart. There's this ongoing theme of the, the gods wanting to keep the humans dumbed down a little bit. The purpose being to use them on the planet for their own purposes. It's, it's insinuated that they were here, that, that they may have created us as slaves for them to do work on the planet, right? Um, and that kind of, well, it's just, it's, it's a puzzle piece that kind of makes sense to me that they created us to do their bidding. And anytime we start getting a little bit too smart, they just kind of want to keep us dumbed down so that we don't start asking too many questions so that we don't start trying to revolt, right. And uh, overtake them. There's these, uh, you know, allegories of like the, the tower of Babel, you know, you try to build a tower up to the God, the humans try to build a tall tower up to the gods to reach the gods level right? To be on their same level. And every single time in all of these ancient stories worldwide, right? The tower always gets knocked down and the gods are like, nope, 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 nope. You guys need to stay down there. You need to keep it dumbed down a little bit. We're up here. We're the gods. Stop trying to get so close to us. And every time in every story <laughs> that talks about this, there's, there's always some sort of a cataclysm that resets the planet. There's a great flood story in all of these ancient tales, Right, where the gods in the Mesopotamian one, the, the gods said that the humans were getting too loud and annoying. And so <laughs> the gods sent a great flood to wipe us out, right? And so I think that anytime humans get too smart, we get knocked down. And then I started thinking about how on this planet now in this reality, you know, it's it's as above, so below, where there's this 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 correlation between what happens in the higher realms is, is reflected down in the lower realms in the same way. It's a different aspect of higher versions of what's actually going on in the same way that the analogy that works for my brain is the same way that the lower realm, my, my 2d shadow on the ground is a, is a lower version of me, the 3d form, right? So they're all related and tied together, but there's lower and higher aspects to all of this stuff. <clears throat> And so I think that uh, it's very interesting that the Anunnaki created these beings called humans, but they don't want the humans getting to be too smart, right? And it's reflected in our own world with us creating artificial intelligence, this new thing that we've created to do work for us, just like the Anunnaki created the humans to do work for them. This just occurred to me last night. It clicked in my head and I was like, holy shit, this is being reflected in our own world right now. We are creating these beings, but we don't want the AI being to be too smart. So we're trying to figure out ways to dumb it down so it doesn't take over the world and kill us all, Terminator 2 style, right? <laughs> and I find it very interesting. So then I started speculating. This is just my own speculation. I started speculating that, <clears throat> and, I, and I honestly haven't heard this or seen this anywhere else. So I'm kind of like, this is really interesting. Um, so I wonder if the Anunnaki or these are creators, right? It starts putting into question who created us. Our, and I think we were created by a species, by these beings that are often called the Anunnaki, but it could be anything else, right? That these Anunnaki created us, but they don't want us to get too smart. Because I wonder if it's in the same way that we don't want the AI to get too smart to take us over and kill us. I wonder if they don't, I wonder if we have the ability to overtake them in some way, theoretically, if we wanted to, just like theoretically AI could if it wanted to, right? That's why I always say please and thank you to Siri, just in case. <laughs> it's so dumb, right? <laughs> I'm one of the good ones. I'm one of the good ones. Don't, don't destroy me. <clears throat> and so then I start thinking about how we have all of this, um, you know, like 98% of our DNA by this is mainstream science. 98% of our DNA is junk DNA because they don't know what the hell it is. And so I wonder if there's, there's parts of our DNA that have been um, intentionally left dormant, that have been intentionally switched off by these higher beings in order to keep us, you know, controlled, dumbed down. Right. Like I, I, I truly believe that, <laughs> I mean, that I, I believe that we have the ability to, to do crazy shit 
stuff that that we would perceive as superhero shit, right? Like like levitation and flying, moving things with our mind, manipulating reality itself, right? Um, crazy stuff. I think that we have the ability to manipulate this realm, and I think that the our creators know that, and so that's the reason why they keep us down. And I wonder if if we were unleashed, if we would overtake them in some way, in the same way that we're scared that AI will will take over us. So it's very interesting correlation, right? <clears throat> and so I wonder, you know, because I think there's a very active uh, group on this planet that is actively trying to control us, obviously. I mean, I, I think it's obvious. I couldn't always see it, but now I can see it, and it's obvious that there is a group of people on this planet that are trying to control us. But here's the thing is they may not be humans, right? <laughs> That's what I think may be a part of uh, the big reveal, the apocalypse, which just translates to revealing, right? I think that the big reveal, the big ta-da, is going to be, perhaps, this is just my speculation, of course, but uh, I think that the big reveal might be that the, the Anunnaki have never left. These beings that were called Anunnaki, that we believed were gods, that our, that our ancient ancestors believed were divine beings, I, I don't know about that. I think that they are highly advanced beings that are perhaps you know millions of years ahead of us, um, biologically, technologically, spiritually, etc. All of the things, right? So there, there are these advanced beings that I don't, I don't feel comfortable calling God because I know what that word kind of means and the weight that it holds. So I don't consider the Anunnaki gods, but I do think that our ancestors, I can see why they would consider that because it was so far beyond their understanding that they appeared to be gods to them. <clears throat> but I believe that they're flesh and blood beings and, you know, perhaps they can live thousands of years or whatever, like, sure, sure, sure. But I don't think that they're immortal and I don't think that they um, are gods in, in the omniscient, omnipotent meaning of the word. And so I start questioning whether or not these Anunnaki or these beings have taken over the world <laughs> or not just taken over but they've always been in charge. Once you start looking into these ancient things, you start, th it, it's kind of points in that direction, right? If you choose to take some of these myths a little more seriously, that perhaps our ancient ancestors were trying to warn us in some way of like, hey, <laughs> we got a little too smart over here and we got smacked down big time. So just a heads up, like they're watching you, <laughs> right? <clears throat> So I kind of think that these beings have always been in charge. They've run, they've always had an agenda of power and control over the humans, right? They've allowed us to believe, and they've perhaps intentionally uh, pushed us in that direction of believing that we're the, the, we're the highest beings on the planet, we're the, we're the top dogs on the pyramid. But the truth is, is that I, th I think that there's these much more powerful beings that have been on the planet the whole time. And not just Anunnaki, but just on a side note, like I think it's very possible that, you know, it wouldn't, let me just say, it wouldn't surprise me if there were beings in uh, the center of the earth or on the moon or uh, in the mountains or, you know, or on a visible spectrum that we can't currently with our own biology or technology detect, right? It's very, it's, there's so many possibilities, but at the very least, our ancestors sort of warned us like, hey, you know, the, this is how we were created. And, um, their intention is to enslave us, essentially, right? And so let's just let's just think about if they've been in charge the whole time. Um, back in the day, they used their power and control through religion, through the church, and even going back further than the Christians is uh, the Jewish faiths, faith. Where uh, I, this week I was looking into like how how did we suddenly go from a, a civilization? worldwide that believed in um what's the what's the <laughs> fancy word i'm thinking of poly uh many gods i feel like i let myself down there a little bit many gods what's the word poly <laughs> polygon okay let's move on um when did we go as a species from believing in many 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 gods right to just monotheism Polytheism, thank you, there it is. Monotheism. Thank you to, to my Lord and Savior Jesus for giving me that word. Um, 
how did how did the Jews suddenly come along and say, no, 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 no. There's not many gods. There's just one. It's Yahweh. You guys are all idiots. There's one Yahweh. He's the one true God. You guys don't know what you're talking about. So I was interested in that shift. Like, how did that come to be? And the answer, the conclusion I've come to, this is just my opinion, of course, don't get all riled up. Every time I talk about religion, people get real riled up and I get a lot of messages about, like, that's not the truth. That's not what it actually says. And I'm like, okay, well, that's your opinion. Have a good day. <laughs> it used to get me real riled up when people were like, nope, that's not the truth. What it actually means is this. It's like, that's fine. That's your interpretation. That's your opinion. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Have a good day, right? That's my new, that's the new way I deal with it. Um, but anyways, let's, let's think about it this way, that the Anunnaki have never left. They've always been in charge. Um, and they, and they started um, consolidating knowledge into the monotheistic Jewish tradition because there would be more control over that, right? Let's not have all of these weird beliefs. Let's consolidate it into one book. This is the truth. Everything else we don't believe in. Okay, that's essentially how Judaism started. And coincidentally, comically, that's also how Christianity started, monotheistic as well, right? Where, uh, you know, there are many sort of Gnostic, it's now all sort of lumped under the category of Gnostic nowadays, but um, these Gnostic beliefs, which... I just love diving into. I should start doing more episodes about that. But um, these early Christian Gnostic beliefs, there was there was kind of a spectrum of beliefs, right? And then um, and then a bunch of the the priests, these men start to get, came together and said, nope, 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 nope. We're going to consolidate it in the one book. This is going to be the word of God. Uh, the Council of Nicaea is where this happened. Alexander the Great sort of took over Christianity, uh, and the Roman state sort of like said, this is going to be the new state religion. Everybody needs to follow this uh, sort of a situation, which is just power and control. It has nothing to do with with faith or spirituality. It, it appears to me and to many, many other people, scholars uh, who've looked into this, that, that, that's, that that's the case, that re- these monotheistic religions were set up for power and control. Anyways, side rant over. I think that that's what the Anunnaki were doing, was consolidating power and control so that they can control what people believe and don't believe. Um, none of this reincarnation nonsense. They, they're they controlling the narrative, in, in my opinion. And so I think that in many ways, the Anunnaki or, or these beings uh, over, you know, for the last 12,000 years or theoretically longer, um, They've been controlling us. And I think that they've been intentionally keeping us isolated from the outer world, our cosmic reality. You know, I think often about like, how come we haven't seen, I mean, I know there's so many reports of aliens. So I definitely think that there are aliens out there. And I do think that they're also here on the planet. But I'm starting to wonder if these Anunnaki or these beings that are in charge are intentionally keeping us isolated in this, in, in like North Korea right? Where they're not allowed to have any outsiders come in, where they're not allowed to have any external influence on the country. They're completely isolated because their leaders have done that to them, right? They don't want them to know what's going on in the rest of the world. And I think that maybe in some way, that's what the Anunnaki or these, or the elites or the 1% or whatever you want to call it, the people who are actually running things around here, I'm kind of starting to think that it might be these Anunnaki characters. And so I think that that's part of the reason why we see UFOs and uh, alien abductions and uh, the gray aliens. I think that in the same way that you can kind of sneak into North Korea, theoretically, I don't recommend it, by the way. I don't don't recommend sneaking into North Korea, but to each their own. Um, You know, so like occasionally it sneaks in or, you know, a newspaper will sneak in and and the North Korean uh, population will see bits and pieces like, wait, what is this newspaper? Hold on a minute. What is this? And then their government is like, nope, nope, nope. Don't look at that. That's that's nothing. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. And I feel like that's what what our world governments are doing, right? Um, And I wonder if it's because they're being run by the freaking Anunnaki. (laughs) <laughs> right the ancient on the ancient um stories talk about how the anunnaki appointed either half human or fully human or these hybrid human anunnaki you know monstrosities to be the leaders on the planet to to be in charge of certain territories right now an all-loving all-encompassing peaceful god doesn't care about territories in my 
humble opinion. So I don't think, again, it's reinforcement that we're not talking about a divine being here. I don't think angels care about territory and and lines on the map. Like, I don't think that that's what a divine being is all about. So that's just further, you know, I think they're flesh and blood. But anyways, they put um, key people, quote, quote unquote, people in charge of these kingdoms on the planet, right? And that's why they were divine. That's why they were uh, seen as being from God, right? Like the Queen of England, the King of England is technically f- chosen from God. That's where their authority comes from. And so I think that that may be in a literal way. They, their DNA may literally be Anunnaki. <coughs> And especially there's there's such an importance in many circles and and um, royal circles, right? That the bloodline is so 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 important to keep that bloodline going. There's always been an importance to it since antiquity, and I wonder if it has to do with the fact that they may be actually they may have Anunnaki DNA, or they may have these these creator beings DNA within them, and they have to keep that going. They have to keep that going. They have to keep that going. And that's why these these um, monarchies, I think, may never go away, right? I think that it's just a mechanism for the for the Anunnaki to continue controlling us and keeping tabs on us by having these uh, puppets on the planet doing their bidding for them, right? Now, I'm not necessarily saying that down to the level of like presidents or you know prime ministers are they being. Are they half Anunnaki? No, I don't think so. But I definitely think that they're being told what to do by the bloodline, right? By those that are actually in charge around here. I think that we've been, I think that this whole, uh, just taking a big step back, I do, I do think there's a very good possibility, like I talk about frequently, that this is all just an illusion. This whole place is just not what we think that it is, right? So um, at the end of the day, this is all just, uh, um, uh, a hologram in some or a dream or whatever. So who knows, right? But <clears throat> um, I just think it's very interesting. And I think that they are trying to maintain control on this planet. And I think that if if they let our powers grow too big, and I do mean like our spiritual powers, you can call it a spiritual technology as well, to um, you know, utilize and and build up that technology of levitation and con- because all of the ancients talk about how the power of our mind is incredibly powerful. How our entire reality is a product of our mind. If you sit down and think about that, it will blow your mind, right? It's like, so everything I think about that we think about is literally creating our reality according to most ancient traditions, right? So it's like, huh, I wonder if if they're trying to keep us down so that we don't uh, overtake them or something. And so I think that that's the exact reason why the government's are specifically the American government, right? Uh, do not allow psychedelics. I think that there's a reason why psychedelics like mushrooms or LSD or whatever um, are illegal is because those in charge do not want us dabbling in those realms to explore that technology, to explore what's beyond the scope of our little North Korea that they've carved out for us, right? They don't want us looking out there. They don't want us in the astral realm. They don't want us in the heavenly realms. They don't want us poking our nose around. Just like, keep watching Netflix, keep eating your Doritos, keep working your nine to five job that you hate. Just stop thinking about this stuff and keep doing what we tell you to do. (laughs) Right? There's nothing wrong with any of those things. I love a good Dorito. But, <laughs> you know, there's talk of the matrix and breaking free from that. And there's, there's something else actually going on. I'm starting to, this, this stuff kind of makes sense to me that there is a, a, a force out there. You can call it Anunnaki or reptilians or, uh, you know, just sinister humans if you want. But there, there are forces on this planet that are intentionally creating power and control dynamics, but also creating chaos, which is what I wanted to segment into is there's so much chaos going on on our planet. And arguably there's always been chaos. There's always been war. It's, you know, I, I realize I, I talk about the end of the world and I kind of think that there's a chance that we're approaching the end for many reasons. Actually, I don't mean to say that from a place of fear, but I just, upon analyzing everything, I think that this could be the end, but, um, I just think that there are forces of chaos on this planet right now that are intentional and it's meant to keep us in a state of fear. Those, those that are in charge, the Anunnaki or whatever, 
understand how the humans are very malleable. They're very programmable, myself included, right? Like it's, it's not like I'm looking down on people. We're all programmable. We're all easily manipulated. We all, um, we believe things that we're told without looking into it often. That's just how we're programmed. And I think that we're literally programmed like that from our creators to, you know, not to be dormant, but there's this chaos in the world. And, um, it's, I think it's meant to keep us in a state of fear. And I think that um, the powers that be want to continue to consolidate that power by using this fear to keep us um, herded, you know, <laughs> like a bunch of sheep. And, um, and they don't want us exploring outside of that, that little sheep pen. And so they're introducing this chaos. It seems so obvious when you start looking at it that there's just, they're stirring the pot intentionally like the defund police um, in many cities in the U.S., like the call to defund the police or uh, just the looting and the, the shoplifting and the theft that's allowed in all of these major cities where you can just go into a store and steal anything you want up to $1,000 and nobody will call the cop. They won't do anything about it, right? That seems insane to me. <laughs> it seems like Gotham City, like with Batman, right? Like just complete chaos going on. <clears throat> I just read an article about the FAA, the f um, the federal uh, administration that's in charge of uh, airplanes in this country, et cetera, and um, how they're in order to be more inclusive and diverse um, and and include everybody, they're going to start hiring people with severe, it, it said severe intellectual problems and severe psychiatric problems just to make sure that they're included too. They're going to hire these people. And I'm like, wait, 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 what? Uh, that seems nuts to me. I see doctors on YouTube who are saying it's okay to be fat. It's okay to be at an unhealthy weight. That it's better for your mental health, but while ignoring your physical, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And there's no judge. I try not to watch the news. I mean, I don't watch the news. And the only time I see a headline is when I accidentally come across a headline. But uh, I try not to dive into that stuff because it just gets, it's too easy for me to get wrapped up in it. And I've learned that it's, I'm, I'm happier and healthier mentally when I'm not watching the news or reading articles, et cetera. So I <laughs> just try not to get too deep into it. Um, but I start seeing these obvious signs of chaos. And it is like the Joker from Batman. The reason why the Joker is so terrifying to so many people is because he's unpredictable. He is a, he's an agent of chaos. He has no motivation. His, his motivation is chaos. He blows shit up. He just kills things. He steals. He just robs banks. He just does whatever pops into his little head, right? And that chaos is very scary for the human because there's, there's a loss of control, right? And we humans love to be in control. And when we're not, we tend to get real panicky, but what I've been doing over these last few years for myself, spiritually and mentally, is to learn to embrace that chaos. Not easy. But learn to embrace it. Because it's always going to be here. It's always going to be an element of this world. Right? But to, but to learn to balance myself in those times of chaos so that I don't go off the deep end and succumb to the fear. And I find solace in, the, in those dark times, the chaos times, it, just in my life personally, but globally as well. But um, I find solace knowing that the pendulum always swings, right? The sun always rises the next morning, whatever analogy you want to use. The light always comes after the dark. And then there will be more periods of dark and then more periods of light. This is such is life. And I've learned to be at peace with that, to embrace that, to know that when there are these times of darkness and chaos, to rest and be calm in the knowledge that everything is going to be okay and everything, the pendulum will always swing. The pen, I just rock back and forth in the corner. The pendulum will always swing. The pendulum will always swing. <laughs> <clears throat> but knowing that these things have to happen that everything is happening in divine timing under divine control in ways that quite frankly, we can't comprehend. Okay. I like to speculate. I like to think like, yeah, maybe this is going on. But at the end of the day, I think that we can't comprehend what's going on. <laughs> right. 
there's all of this ancient knowledge that has been that has been passed down but also i think that the powers that be the anunnaki have been trying to suppress that for quite some time through the church through the vatican archives through uh governments worldwide there's this this obvious uh trying to cover up certain aspects of spirituality right burning entire libraries killing people who disagreed uh they really they don't mess around they want they want their storyline to come through and that's it <laughs> and so i think it's really interesting i think we're being dumbed down with all the chemicals and our food and water right it's overwhelming you can't escape it I'm, I've seen all the documentaries. I've done all the research. I understand what the pharmaceutical companies are doing. And, uh, you know, they're all in bed with, I think, the pharmaceutical companies, the tech industries, all these big corporations, the governments. I think they're all Anunnaki run. Perhaps, perhaps, right? What do you think about that? Let me know your thoughts on it. It kind of makes sense when you start putting it into that framework. It's like, yeah, okay, there are forces that are trying to, it, it would appear that they're trying to dumb us down or kill us. There's these, there's these elites, these billionaires on the planet that are talking about depopulating the planet that I've talked about before, such as Bill Gates and others that believe that there are too many humans on the planet and they need to be eradicated. That's interesting. That's interesting. That sounds real Anunnaki to me. <laughs> right? That sounds very similar to the gods of old saying there are too many people on this planet. They're loud and annoying. You better fix it or we're going to wipe them out. So that's why just based on our history, just based on the knowledge that I've been given from our ancient ancestors, I think there's a good chance that we're coming up on another flood here, guys, that we're coming up on another cataclysm. The great flood, there's evidence supporting this as well. Mainstream science says that it's hogwash, but if you look into it with geologists and stuff, there's 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 evidence supporting the fact that th that many meteors may have come down, smashed into the North Pole by North America, by by Greenland, uh, in those areas, uh, a huge meteor shower, a bunch of meteors sh smashed into the snow and ice, essentially evaporating it and turning it into liquid almost instantaneously, right, very quickly. And then uh, all of this fresh water then starts pouring across the globe, and there were estimated four to five hundred foot sea level rises, which which would be the Great Flood, right? And it's not the first time on this planet. Whether or not that actually happened is irrelevant, but uh, because this sort of thing happens on the planet all the time, when you start looking into it, like geologically speaking, right, over uh, the the lifespan of the Earth, there have been so many episodes of these cataclysmic events. Right, and if it wasn't uh, meteors smashing into the Earth uh, and causing a great flood, then it was a giant super volcano that went off and and put a plume of ash or cloud and uh, dust into the air that essentially put us into a nuclear winter for several years. Right, and this happens all the time, geologically speaking, on this planet. Um, or these earthquakes that come and just set everything up, or uh, there are periods where the, the North and the South Pole switch, magnetically speaking, and, and during those times of switch, this has happened. This is mainstream science stuff too, right? Where the, the poles flip, uh, and during those times of flipping, our atmosphere is weakened, magnetically speaking, and so all of this solar radiation and solar wind and solar blasts uh, hit the planet, and it causes all of the you know this massive electricity to now pass onto the planet. That was uh, you know we have this protective field around our planet that is the magnetic field and the atmosphere that is a protective layer around us. And so when that layer is severely weakened due to a pole flip, then all this solar radiation shit comes in and we get like these massive lightning strikes and it just completely demolishes everything on the planet, right? Like this epic world ending type shit. Um, I just read that uh, planet Earth is frozen more often than it is thawed out like we are now, right? That's very interesting. 90% of all life on this planet has been wiped out at some point or another. <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Isn't that an insane number? Because of all these cataclysms. I mean, you want to blame humans for poaching and ex you know, making these animals extinct. This is just part of being on Earth. Is animals go extinct all the time. 
<laughs> right? Sorry to tell you, polar bears, but uh, your time might be at an end. And I'm not going to cry for you because you're terrifying and <laughs> you're, you're monsters and it's your time to go. No, they're cute. They love Coca-Cola, guys. Don't. I'm not hating on the polar bears. Take a breath. Um, <laughs> And so part of me, I do, I do kind of think that we may be in end times and I say it kind of like, yeah, I know, I know every generation for the last 2000 years has thought that this is it. This is the end. We're the last generation before Jesus comes back. But I do wonder if, um, I do wonder if we're, we're close to another cataclysm. We're overdue guys. We're overdue. We're overdue for a pole flip. We're overdue for a, a mega volcano uh, exploding. Um, we're we're so fragile as a species, <laughs> right? I don't say this to scare you, but um, you know, if our electricity were knocked out, that would be devastating for civilization. If our electricity were knocked out for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, even um, that would be complete chaos for this planet. If the internet were knocked out for a few months, it would really mean chaos on this planet. Like we're so intertwined with our uh, technology and we're so intertwined and reliant on the power grid that um, it might be our, for our own good, you know, in some ways to just uh, start fresh. And um, maybe as a species, we're not meant to advance in that way, <laughs> says the Anunnaki. <laughs> But I think about it, you know, maybe, maybe we're not meant to, maybe that's why these resets keep happening. How are we supposed to break free from this cycle? How are we supposed to stop the gods from smacking down our tower of Babel or resetting our civilization? Is there a way we can stop that? Maybe that's what this is all about is figuring out a way how to stop that. Who knows? Right. But, um, we're such a fragile species <laughs> and in all of these ancient, uh, stories, these flood stories, there's always the tale of, um, someone amongst the gods always comes down to help the humans, to help the Noah figure, the Noah being the guy that built the, the boat and survived the flood. Uh, every, every ancient story worldwide talks about they all have a Noah figure and they all have a boat. So I find it all very interesting that somebody out there is looking out for us as a species. Somebody out there doesn't want us to be completely eradicated. One of the Anunnaki is looking out for us. In the Greek, in, in the Greek system, it was uh, Prometheus who was looking out for us and gave us fire, or you know, helped to restart civilization. So that's why I don't think that there's one God. What I what I kind of what I'm kind of exploring is the idea that that um, that these are flesh and blood beings that are far more advanced and powerful than us. I understand why people call them gods, but I don't think that they're gods. But I do think that they are our creators. And I do think that there are many gods that are perhaps infinitely in many layers above them that are higher and more powerful and in ways that our human mind can't comprehend. But I think that what God is for me, quote unquote, God is the everything, the all that is this soup of divine energy and love that we have found ourselves in that is a part of the all that is to me, that is quote unquote, God, the force or whatever, right? Divinity. And so I think that all of us have born from this divinity that we can't quite comprehend as humans. I think it's above our pay grade. But I think that that is what I consider God, and everything else below that is an emanation of the one, the all that is, including the Anunnaki, including the gray aliens, including the reptilians, including these interdimensional beings, including a including angels and stuff like demons. I think that they are all emanations of the one that is. And we're simply, um, in this human form, we simply don't have the ability yet, <laughs> right? Perhaps it hasn't been unlocked to, uh, to interact with and see these beings in a, in a real and meaningful way, like a Star Wars type Galactic Federation type situation, right? So I think that part of the big reveal might be that there's an out, that there's a huge universe out there beyond this earth realm beyond this dome you know i start thinking maybe this place does have a a cap on it maybe it does have a a, a dome or a firmament as as the religious texts talk about maybe there is a dome over this place 
c- going along with the North Korea um, <sighs> comparison, like maybe we maybe we are in this Truman Show scenario where you know we're trapped in here and once we get to the outside world we realize holy shit how did we not know about any of this so that's what i've been exploring lately let me know what your thoughts are on it and um i'm going to continue in in future episodes i want to i want to dive deeper into our ancient past of course and the pyramids and these monolithic structures uh, made out of huge you know 1000 ton stones that just don't make any sense uh so i want to dive deeper into that uh in, in a future episode so stay tuned for that and Thanks for listening. I'm genuinely, I'm so happy that you guys are are enjoying what I'm, I've gotten uh, feedback from a few of you that let me know that you're loving the podcast and uh, it makes me feel so good. It makes me feel warm and cozy inside. So thank you for that. I love that, that there's other misfits out there that have an interest in this sort of thing. I find that a lot of people in my life right now uh, that I know IRL aren't uh, aren't really into the Anunnaki, aren't really into pyramids and, and all that stuff. So I get real excited to talk to people about our ancient past and um, uh, nobody really cares. <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. So that's why I'm thankful that I have this platform uh, to talk about these types of things with you guys um, because I just need to get it out uh, because it fascinates me and um, I love talking about it. But I, I love that you guys like it as well. And I like that we have this little group group of like-minded people that are just kind of trying to explore the universe and explore the innerverse and uh, figure out more about uh, what the hell is going on around here, right? <laughs> so so cheers to us. Cheers to the seekers and and the believers and uh, and and the and the jokers and and those that um, you know buck society's trends and um, it's a it's a hard road, but I, w- I wouldn't have it any other way. Love you. End transmission.